Big Navi's looking really, really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently over on Twitter, a user who goes by at PJLabUH posted another supposed RX 6800 benchmark showing some very impressive results, which by the way, as always, links to all my sources will be in the description below. But in any case, I decided to take his results and take my own RTX 3070 that I recently got and try and do a head-to-head -head comparison. Now he used a different CPU than me. I have a much stronger CPU. I have a, um, it's a R9 3900XT, which is clocked to 4. 0.55 gigahertz on six cores and I believe 4.5 gigahertz on the other cores whereas he was using an R5 3500X so it's gonna be a little bit uneven but I decided to take my 3070 and I took a stock result and an overclocked result and then we're gonna go ahead and compare these results to see just how fast this RX 6800 could possibly be. So if we go ahead and take a look at the results here with the R5 3500X and supposed RX 6800 we can see here that he gets a time spy score of 12,704 which while that is pretty impressive we really really can't take that score and compare it to mine because unfortunately my 3900 XT overclocked is just going to be way too unfair. So we actually have to take a look at the graphics scores here and that's how we're going to compare them. So if we take a look at his overall graphics score, he gets 16,775, which is really high. And when we compare that to what I got for the stock score for the RTX 3070, I got 14,076 points. So if we do the math here, that means that stock to stock, this RX 6800 should be around 19.2% faster which is a pretty impressive lead. Now, if we take a look at my overclocked RTX 3070 results, here it's a little bit less impressive because with my result of 14,960, unfortunately, that's only a 12.6% lead for the RX 6800 here. So again, not quite as impressive. But, you know, overall, I think that these results are really good because, you know, the RX 6800 should be about $580, which isn't too bad. And if we compare that to the RTX 3070 that I just bought, well, that's $580 because the RTX 3070 that I bought is not a stock RTX 3070. So in fact, it might have a little bit of an advantage here. But you know, taking a look at those results, if you can get about 19.2% more performance for the exact same price, you know, that's really not too bad. And on top of that, you're actually getting two times the VRAM amount because the RTX 3070 unfortunately only comes with eight gigabytes of VRAM, which I said over and over again, just it's not going to be enough going forward. Because if you take a look at the consoles with their 16 gigabytes of VRAM, yes, they don't have access to all 16 for the games, but I believe they're only reserving about four gigabytes for the system RAM, which leaves them with about 12 gigabytes of VRAM to use for games. And if the actual people making the games do end up using that full 12 gigabytes, well, you can expect that you're going to need pretty much at least 12 gigabytes on the PC to play ultra settings on the newest games coming out over the next one to two years. And in fact, that's not taking into account that the PC usually gets even higher quality settings as options. So if we get even higher resolution textures or high resolution shadows, well, you could expect to need possibly even more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM to get optimal performance with these graphics cards. So the eight gigabytes on the RTX 3070 is very disappointing. And so if you can get for the, you know, roughly the same price, 16 gigabytes on the AMD card, well, you know, that's not too bad. Plus the extra performance, I'm kind of liking that. But you know, if we also take a look at these previous results that I talked about in a previous video where the RX 6800 was actually beating the 2080 Ti and the RTX 3070, even with ray tracing on in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yes, I know that's just one game and it might favor AMD. Well, I think the overall overall picture of the RX 6800 is starting to look really good. But you know, in my opinion, one thing that doesn't look really good for AMD is these prices because yes, they are pretty competitive overall. I just, I think especially with the RX 6800, $580 is a little bit steep for this card. I know, I know it has a lot of advantages. The 16 gigabytes of VRAM is very, very nice, but I think this card really should have come in at about $530 max. And at that price point, I think it would have been a no brainer for RTX 3070 buyers. I, you know, to be honest with you, I think think $580 is just a little bit too much. And, you know, taking a look at the 6800 XT, I don't think that's too bad. It, it doesn't need a price cut quite as bad, but I think $650 could have been shaved down to $600. Then, of course, with the 6900 XT, I'd like to see that card at a maximum of $800. But, hey, you know what? It, they, they're just going to sell every single card they can possibly make. So I understand why they're charging as much as they are. And when you compare like the 6900 XT to the 3090, I mean, it's already $500 cheaper. So I guess when, when you look at it that way, it's not too bad. But I would have liked to see the prices a little bit lower. I think AMD's getting just a little bit too aggressive with their prices right now. And I don't really like that. And in fact, there's a couple other things that I'm not really too confident about with AMD cards. And that would come down to, you know, what are they going to do about DLSS? Because even though they were beating the RTX... 
2080 Ti and 3070 in those previous benchmarks, they actually were losing, the RX 6800 supposedly was losing with DLSS on with the 2080 Ti and 3070. So they really need to have a DLSS competitor. It's going to be a big thing going forward. I think if it can become standardized and basically a global toggle where it just takes any, any image and can take it from like 1080p to 4K, if that does end up being the future, which I do believe it will, well, AMD needs to get on that train pretty soon here because if they don't have a response to that, they're just going to fall way behind. And even if like the 6800 is way faster than the 3070, well, if the 3070 can have DLSS on all the time, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? And I also know some people are worried about AMD's encoder capabilities, such as using HEVC H.265 encoding with Premiere. And that's something that does worry me a little bit. I, but I did a little bit of research on it, and it seems like, now I may be wrong, but it seems like AMD has been implemented into the Adobe software suite with um, GPU acceleration. So they should be capable of doing that stuff. But if it isn't capable, you'll be sure that I'll let you know because I will be trying my hardest to get an RX 6800 or 6800 XT as I do believe those two graphics cards do represent some pretty decent value and they do look like much better alternatives, at least in my opinion, to the 3070 and 3080 just based on their price point and their performance and especially that VRAM. I think to get, to get you know 16 gigabytes of VRAM is really awesome, not only for content creators, but for games as well. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these 6800 benchmarks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.